infectious diseases, research, medicine, health. Welcome to Outbreak News Interviews. And now, broadcasting from the Outbreak News Skylar Studios in beautiful West Central Florida, here is your host, microbiologist and editor of OutbreakNewsToday.com, Robert Harriman. What is osteomyelitis? Yes, osteomyelitis is infection of the bones. Uh, so any, uh, any uh, long bone or, or joint uh, may be involved with osteomyelitis. And there are three basic types. There is the hematogenous form in which the bone becomes infected from the bloodstream, and that's usually caused by Staphylococcus aureus. Um, it's probably the easiest type to cure, and mostly we'll see that in uh, kids and young adults. The ones that we see most often in older adults are contiguous osteomyelitis and neurovascular osteomyelitis. The contiguous osteomyelitis is related to trauma, uh, basically bacteria driven into the bone. Uh, by trauma and open fa- open fracture, mm-hmm. that sort of thing. And that's harder to cure, about a 50% cure with uh, debridement. Usually there will be gram negatives and uh, staphylococcus uh, involved as well. And the neurovascular form is, uh, can, you can consider it contiguous. It's often related to uh, peripheral neuropathy, where people can't feel their feet and they develop an ulcer and that ulcer, because they can't feel it, uh, gets down into bone. And that that is even more difficult to cure. That uh, really depends on the ability to get blood flow down there and um, clear up uh, the infection with debridement. What are some of the complications uh, you deal with with osteomyelitis? The main one uh, is non-union uh, of a fracture, uh, like an open fracture, or even, uh, uh, and that can be with hematogenous osteomyelitis. Uh, also, post-trauma, uh, uh, if there's a fracture that there was an open trauma where somebody needed to have pinning or an intramedullary rod or, or something of that nature, there might, if if it if it is not. Um, if there's enough infection in there, there may be non-union. Uh, limbs may be shortened, of course, because of that. Patients may have gait disturbances. Uh, some of the things that are less common but more associated with long-term untreated osteomyelitis, and we do see a lot of patients, for example, with um, shrapnel injuries or old osteomyelitis. They've had it for 20 years, 30 years, and uh, occasionally it drains. Um, those patients can be uh, uh, at risk for squamous cell cancer in the sinus tract, if they have a sinus tract. Uh, they can also develop amyloidosis related to that chronic inflammation. So that's something to think about in those patients. Well, in addition to the different laboratory studies that you would run, um, some imaging studies are probably quite useful for diagnosing osteomyelitis. Yes. The most useful ones, the ones with the highest po- positive and negative predictive values, are MRI and CTs without contrast. So you'll see those ordered most often. Um, the positive predictive value of bone scans and indium scans is uh, a lot lower, uh, less than 70%, so it's not necessarily useful on its own. You might use it in co- in combination with uh, the other uh, imaging studies. Plain films, you might see uh, maybe 50-50 uh, uh, make the diagnosis on 50%, but you won't see findings on that uh, until about two weeks at least of infection. Uh, gallium scans, not necessarily all that useful. So the more useful ones are MRI scans and CT without contrast if you're going to order anything. Yeah. 